That was two weeks ago in Michigan. And it gives you a good sense of how the logs are prepared before delivery. Well, now we're back at our cabin site, and they're putting down more logs on our foundation, and that's where we'll pick it up again. The first trailer had the initial one-third of the logs needed to build our home, and the crew continued working until dusk to finish it, since the next trailer would be arriving first thing in the morning. As general contractors, there's not a whole lot we can do to help out the assembly crew, but there are a few things to do around the site, and that's what we're working on now. Like the field stone that's mortared in around the foundation? We've collected all that from the property around here, and now we're stockpiling more for the fireplace. All this debris? Well, they had to clear a lot of trees to bring in the road and prep the building site. So I'm just now in the process cleaning up some of that now. I sure put in a long day yesterday, didn't I? Yeah, well, the second truck ought to be here any minute now, I would think. Well, they're just about to the top of the first floor. As they reach that point, you'll notice that the wall logs start taking on new rolls. Well, for instance, this one log sticking out here, which eventually will be supported by a post over in this area, will help support the roof as that comes out the back here, as will a tie log running up the center of the building and another log that will come out on that side of the building. Tie logs are used in a log building to literally tie opposing walls together and they're notched to fit over those walls. They run through the log home's interior, so they're frequently left exposed to enhance the overall appearance. This one carries from the front entryway to the back porch, so it's actually the longest log in our home. So the uh, boom is at its capacity, huh? It's about maxed out, as they say. Yeah. Well, we're well into the second log truck, and things seem to be going pretty well. This is Dick Tuxbury, and he's overseeing the reconstruction of our log home here. Uh, is everything going on schedule? Everything's going fairly well. The only thing that's maybe holding us up a little bit are the trees that are on the other side of the house. Uh, the boom is having a hard time swinging around them with the logs. Well, all the same, though, things are going up really quickly. They are going up quickly. Um, if we try to build this on site, uh, we may be here for 10 or 12 weeks. But the fact that uh, we pre-built this in our log yard in Michigan, we can do things very quickly there. Yeah, so all your homework makes our life easier. Right. All the fitting and matching was done there. It was all tried and true. Yeah. So it worked well. So they're working on a joist now, is that right? They're putting down a layer of joist right now, I believe. Should we go look? Yeah. All right. Take a look. In log buildings, logs can also be used to support floors. And our plan calls for log joists under the second floor. They're saddle notched below to fit snugly and cut flat on the top for flooring. But the ends have been left round, since so will be visible even after the cabin is finished. These log joists are pretty hefty to say the least. So the spacing between them is a little bit wider than you'd find in conventional framing. And that gives us some leeway in our layout too. Well, for instance, the spacing between some of these joists varies ever so slightly. And that's because we needed two of these joists to fall directly above some 2 by 4 walls that we'll be framing later on. Cutting logs is sometimes necessary to remove bad lengths or to cover long distances. The ends are secured with metal strapping, and the splice only goes where it can later be hidden by a notch. Once all the joists are laid across the logs that support them, the cab logs can be set in place over the joists. They're notched on the bottom to literally cap off the joists and secure them in the structure. They're also the first logs on the second floor wall, which now begin to rise as the assembly progresses. This is a wall that separates the master bedroom from the rest of the first floor. Now on either side here, they've created what's called a blind notch. During the manufacturing process, they cut off the logs back here a little short. You notice they don't crisscross like most of the notches in the house do. Then they notch out the backs of these logs slide them over those logs, and it makes it a lot easier to frame out the doorway. Now, just because these logs are cut off a little bit for the doorway, it kind of leaves them a little bit freestanding. But that isn't a problem, because they've reinforced everything with metal rebar. 
With a high log and cast log in place over the back porch, crew members cut log posts to support the ends of the logs. Log buildings often require posts to bear the weight of the logs, and you need footings below to strengthen the posts. They bring extra logs to this kind of posting, and they'll do the installation if your footings are ready. If not, you'll have to cut the logs to jump later on. With the vertical supports in place, they set in the first log purlin. Purlins are unique to log home construction. Now, typically, they span from gable end to gable end horizontally, helping to support the roof and the dormers. Their ends are tied into the gable end logs, so the structure gets pretty complex, especially because of all the different features we're planning for our roof. In fact, it ought to be pretty interesting to see how they handle the dormers. They're also moving along in the entryway. These massive 20-inch logs will be used as posts to support the logs here that will form the roof of the entryway. Because of the weight of the logs, they're using the boom truck to help position them. Now, you don't want rain pooling on the post upper ends, so they angle cut the tops with chainsaws to drain the water off. And on the bottom, they're set on a piece of treated plywood, which will later be removed as the logs settle. As evening approached, the crew kept right on moving the logs onto the cabin. But as Dick had predicted, they were falling behind schedule. The crew had hoped to finish up with the second log trailer yesterday, but they ran out of daylight. They're just finishing up those last logs now. The purlins and posts are in position over the front entryway, and here they're building up the gable ends and the roof for the master bedroom. are typically spiked together for vertical strength, which makes it possible to swing two or three into position at once. These two take the cabin wall up to the same height as the master bedroom's outside wall. That's where the ridge log comes in for the master bedroom roof. It's spiked into position over the house wall, and a saddle is secured over the outside end to match the angle of the bedroom rafters, which can now be installed. Over the house, log purlins will supply the main support for the roof. But here in the master bedroom, we'll be using log rafters rather than the horizontal purlins. Now these work basically the same as dimensional rafters, except of course due to their size and consequently their strength, we're able to space them a little bit further apart. These will be 32 inches on center. The rafters are notched for the walls and for the ridge log. They're plumb cut on top to form peaks with the rafters coming up from the other side. And they're plain flat on one side to create an even surface for securing the roofing material. After the rafters are all in, short logs are wedged between them to fill the open spaces where they cross the wall log. And that finishes the second log trailer, so they can move the final load into position. Delays the reconstruction force the third truck to wait several hours for the second one to be unloaded, and that adds to the cost of delivery. As the third truck is prepared for unloading, they're now enlarging the main door openings on the first floor. This will make it easier to move in and out as the construction proceeds, and as a preview of the cutting we'll be doing later on the other doors and on the windows. A log stairway was included in our package. They cut and assembled it in Michigan and packed it on top of the third load. So it's the first thing to come off. They're setting it inside for now since the supports for it aren't quite ready yet. They're building up the gable ends now for the next round of purlins. Now you can build gable ends with regular and dimensional lumber. But one of the reasons we went with this builder is because of their use of logs on the end. The logs going in now are notched and angle cut to serve several functions. The notched ends will help form the dormers, and the angled ends will support the roofing material. 
so they're cut to match the 912 pitch of our main rough. And there's a wall rising out of the second floor as the assembly continues. The end of its logs are also framing the roof and dormers. The next log caps off the master bedroom ridge log and raises that gable end up to where two more purlins come in. The purlins extend from gable end to gable end, and the maneuvering them through the trees does take a while. They're notched to lock in securely with the wall logs. A second purlin follows the first one. It goes in on the opposite side of the roof. Now the purlins will directly support the finished roof, so their angle cut on the edge to match the 912 pitch. When that's in place, they continue up with the next set of gable end logs, which are spiked together for quick reassembly. Now I want to show you a couple things inside. Even as massive as this tie log is, we still have to support it with a couple of steel posts. Now these don't exactly match the rest of the wood posts, but that's all right because later on these will be hidden inside an interior partition wall. Now, the floor joists up here are supported by these three wood posts. The one back here is permanent, but these two right here are temporary. They'll come out as soon as we install the stairway, and that goes up once our landing up here is installed. Now this area right here will remain open. We'll have clear story windows up on the roof. This area up here will become a loft, and this wall right here will separate this part of the house from the back here, which will become three bedrooms. Up here, they've cut out an access area into the bedrooms. Later on, they'll make this a little bit larger. It'll become the opening for the hallway. One thing that's kind of interesting is they've taken a chainsaw and routed out the log here. This way, we can take our subfloor and just slide it right into that routed opening. We won't have to scribe the subfloor to the form of the log. As the end of our third day approached, there were still quite a few logs left, and it became obvious that they wouldn't get finished on this day. Well, for a variety of reasons, the crew's been losing about two hours a day, so it's going to take them about another half day to finish, but luckily they will finish everything up today. Most of the problems have been related to site conditions, but again, all this adds to the cost of reconstruction. The dormers are starting to take shape on this side of the roof. The notched logs are in place, which form the dormer side walls, and they'll have the same types of corners as we have on the main walls. Now as they near the top of the cabin, the logs get a little shorter, so the boom cable will move a little more quickly through the trees. That means they can move pretty fast.